Chapter 31 Free Training Partner I'll just fight her. She's just a woman after all, Hansen whispered to himself. Hansen knew that Qin Shin would not leave him alone no matter how he restrained himself. So he would no longer do that. He had almost mastered Ghost Haunt, and it would be great for him to practice it on her. When Hansen stood in front of Qin Shin in a combat suit, she didn't spare any effort and kicked him with a leg sweep. For Hansen, who was good at sneak attacks, as long as he had no chance to sneak up, he was doomed to lose. Hence Qin Shin hit first and didn't give Hansen any chance. But she had still committed a great mistake. She still didn't take Hansen seriously enough and did not regard him as an opponent. All she wanted to do was to kick his ass. That's why she didn't use even half her strength. In her mind, he was still the ignorant ass freak, a rookie who could be bullied by anyone in the shelter. Qin Shin did not really want to harm Hansen, so she wasn't hitting hard. But what she didn't know was that Hansen now had 18 sacred Geno points and was practicing Jade Skin. Although not as fit as her, the gap between them was not so big either. Seeing her leg sweep, Hansen moved to a spot where Qin Shin couldn't reach and twisted her leg with his arms. She immediately lost balance and fell to the ground. Hansen immediately pressed himself against her and locked her limbs down. Qin Shin hadn't expected such nifty moves from him, and when she realized her mistake, she was trapped and couldn't wriggle free. Feeling anger and shame, she struggled and failed because of the clever techniques of Ghost Haunt. If she struggled with all her strength, her arms would be dislocated or even broken. Trapped by Hansen, she blushed and still couldn't believe Hansen had taken her with the first move. She wanted to teach him a lesson, and everything went wrong. Station Master, did I win? Hansen was secretly pleased. I did not expect old devil's teaching to work. I even beat Qin Xian. You will never win. Qin Xian raged and refused to throw in the towel. If it was anyone else, it might be fine. But for this despicable ass freak, she would not bow her head. Qin Xian roared and shape shifted into a golden lion taller than a man. Hansen was thrown off her instantaneously, and the lion swooped down at him. Foul. We have agreed not to use any beast souls, Hansen quickly shouted. Qin Xian paused as her lion paw was about to hit him. She did promise last time that she wouldn't use beast souls. But under the circumstances, she had completely forgotten about it. All right, no beast souls. Qin Xian secretly blushed, took back her beast soul and launched an attack with her fist. Hansen still hadn't completely mastered Ghost Haunt, and his fitness and experience fell short compared to Qin Xian. Although he resisted over 20 movements from her, he was still beat. Qin Xian did not say anything and turned away. In fact, she felt ashamed because if she hadn't used her beast soul, she couldn't have gotten rid of Han Senator, so she had already lost at that moment. I'm still not strong enough. My Geno points and fighting skills were not even close to hers. Hansen knew that he couldn't have caught up with the best in steel armor shelter in such a short amount of time, while he was still a little disappointed that he couldn't even take 30 movements from her. Qin Xian was still blushing after a shower. She was truly abashed that she was put in such a tough situation by ass freak. Something is wrong. Although his wrestling skills were not bad, he couldn't have locked me down without great fitness. How did he gain so many Geno points? Thought Qin Shin suddenly. She quickly called out the data collected in Han Sen's combat suit. Qin Shin clenched her lips and cursed bitterly. That bastard. He must have maxed out on his mutant Geno points already. He was just playing weak to make me underestimate him. Ass freak, I'll never make peace with you. From then on, every time Hansen passed the teleport station, Qin Shin would always call him into the combat room. Hansen was glad to oblige. Wrestling skills such as Ghost Haunt really need much practice, and with a training partner as good as Qin Shin, he could not really hone his techniques. Some pain was nothing compared to his gain. If it was not for Qin Shin, Hansen could only practice when risking his life, which was far more dangerous than his fights with her. Of course, Hansen was careful so that she didn't notice he was using her. Each time he would get on her nerves on purpose so that she would keep calling him to the combat room. Qin Xian picked on Hansen many times but still didn't get over it. Every time she saw his smiling face, she would get mad and have an urge to beat him up. It almost became a habit of hers. Chapter 32 A Ritual Between Men the copper-toothed beast fed by Hansen had become purple in color and bigger in size two months after it had become a mutant creature. Whether I could keep rising in the world all depends on you. 
please become a sacred creature soon. Hansen looked at the purple color of its skin and thought it was about time. Judging from the situation, it would take about three months for a mutant creature to evolve into a sacred blood creature. This period was neither too long nor too short. It was almost impossible for most people to hunt a sacred blood creature in just three months. Even Chin Xian might not have been able to hunt a sacred blood creature for a year. Now with this black crystal, Hansen could have an entire sacred blood creature to his own every three months, which was simply incredible. Just give me enough time and I could easily evolve with all four types of Geno points maxed out. By then I will gain the title of Sacred Blood Aristocrat for sure. Hansen was getting excited. He did not see Qin Xian at the teleport station on his way home. She could be either tired of this game or simply busy. Outside the station, he saw a girl standing at the roadside and stopped walking. It was Xueshi, the girl who grew up with Zhang Danfeng and him. Xueshi was from a single parent family and her mother had raised her by working at Han Sen's father's company. With no one to babysit her, her mother had often brought her to work, and she had always played with Zhang Danfeng and Han Sr. Later, Hansen heard that Xue Xi's father was still alive and found her mother and her. After his dad's incident, Hansen didn't have the energy to learn more about her family. But he did hear that she was an illegitimate daughter and her father only took her back after his wife passed away. Sin. Xue Shi also saw Han Sen and exclaimed. Why are you here? Asked Han Sen, puzzled. Sen, I'm over 16 and can enter God's sanctuary now, Xue Shi chuckled and said. So fast? Han Sen was startled. In his mind, Xue Shi was a little girl, and now she could even enter God's sanctuary. I'm only a few months younger than you. Don't think of me as a child, Xue Shi said discontentedly. Indeed, how time flies. Hansen looked at her well-developed body and smiled. She was no longer a little girl. Xueshi blushed as Han Xian looked at her. When she was about to say something, there was a roar of an engine, and they saw a well-dressed young man coming down from a private aircraft parked on the roadside. The young man was about 20 years old, and that private aircraft alone was worth more than 10 million. Sister, I said earlier to use our private teleport equipment. It's just inevitable that we should meet some annoying people at a teleport station. The young people did not even look at Han Sen and went straight to Xueshi. Brother, he is my childhood friend, Xueshi quickly explained. Well, we should go back. The young man ignored her explanation, took her hand, and led her on the aircraft. Sen, I'll come back, Xueshi said to Han Sen softly before she went. The young people returned to warn Han Sen. People like you aren't worthy to be her friend. Leave her alone or you'll be sorry. Are you talking to me? Hansen glanced at him. You don't believe what I said? The young man suddenly stepped forward and quickly hit Hansen's lower abdomen with a knee. He was very close to Hansen and he was incredibly fast. His knee suddenly came toward Han Sr. Hansen looked calm but secretly sneered. Nothing is better for wrestling than ghost haunt. Even Chin Xin dares not let me get close now. Leaning to one side, Hansen avoided his knee and stuck a leg behind his leg on the ground. Hansen's also clamped the young man's neck and pulled hard. Bang! The young man suddenly lost his balance and fell to the floor. Lying on the ground, he looked at Hansen in shock and forgot to get up. He didn't expect his hit would be in vain and couldn't believe he was pulled down by Han Sr. Sen, what happened? Seeing things going wrong, Xue Shi ran down from the aircraft and quickly helped the young man up. Nothing just a ritual between men. It is late, and I need to go. Let's eat together sometime. Hansen smiled, waved goodbye, and went to the train station. Brother, you alright? Shweshi asked the young man. Interesting, really interesting. The young man watched Hansen leaving with a strange smile. Seeing the young man smiling, Shweshi was suddenly anxious. Brother, don't pick on him. He didn't mean it. He could make me fall even when he didn't mean it. If he meant it, then would I, Fang Jingqi, be killed, he said with his eyes narrowed. Brother, that's not what I meant. Xue Shi panicked and did not know how to explain. No worry, sister. As he said, it was a ritual between men and I shall return the favor. Fang Jingqi stared frantically in the direction where Han Sen went. In a few days, please invite him to dinner at home. What? Xue Shi looked at Fang Jingqi and could not believe her own ears. Chapter 33 Polar night for him. Hansen didn't go far to hunt these days. He was on his own, 
So unless he went somewhere no one would go, it wasn't likely he could find mutant or sacred blood creatures before the gangs of Qin Shin, Son of Heaven, or Fist Guy did. Hansen went on the Skynet and logged into a forum called Polar Knight, whose members were people from different planets currently struggling in God's sanctuary. Here, people from the same shelter could exchange information and needs. Although the Alliance had a similar official site, it was much easier for people to go on Polar Night because all you needed was a username. On the official site, you'd need to register with your real identity. Not wanting anyone to know his identity, Hansen went to the section of Steel Armor Shelter, where there were a lot of posts, roughly a 1,000 or more per day. He went through the postings, most of which were buying or selling information, and then there was some recruiting information. For example, the rich would spend money to hire some people from the same shelter to protect or help the child. Recently, Hansen's luck had been poor. Not only couldn't he find any mutual creatures or sacred blood creatures, he also failed to gain any beast souls. So, he decided to work for money. Hansen browsed for a while and saw a job posting that paid well. He was surprised to see it was Lin Beifeng who posted it. Hansen hadn't seen him since the last time they met. It was unexpected that he had also posted in Steel Armor Shelter. Lin Beifeng was not only recruiting good men, but also making offers for beast souls and mutant creature flesh. He wanted all the good things and was willing to pay for them. People who answered his thread were mainly just onlookers. After all, the demands for mutant creature flesh and beast souls were so high that no one would sell easily. Hansen browsed a while and turned to other threads, and soon he found a satisfactory job. There were several young people who had just entered God's sanctuary hiring a skilled hunter to help them kill primitive creatures. The requirement was to be able to deal with 10 primitive creatures and protect them at the same time, alone. In a word, this was a babysitting job, watching these rookies fight primitive creatures and save them when they encountered danger. This job was not difficult, but quite troublesome. Generally speaking, the experience would not take such a job. But these young men were paying well, 10,000 to protect them each day, and one contract was for at least half a month. Hansen sent a text message to the number they had left and didn't leave voicemail or send an image of himself. He didn't want his personal information to leak out, and that was why he had chosen Polar Night. He could have gone to the official site, where everything was regulated and protected by law, but he would need to sign the contract with his real identity. After a while, he received a reply, which said they had to see how well he could fight before deciding to hire him. Hansen had no problem with that and agreed to meet at a certain time and place in Steel Armor Shelter. After agreeing to meet, Hansen did not close the window but continued to browse the trading section. After his bronze crescent spear was destroyed, he had wanted to hunt himself a weapon beast soul, but he had had no luck with the beast soul at all. Hansen wasn't trying to buy a weapon beast soul, but a man-made alloy bow and arrow. Alpha alloy weapons could now easily kill primitive beasts, but not mutant creatures. They were not cheap either, and normally even more expensive than primitive beast souls. Hansen could use most of the weapons, but he had worked hard on archery since he had planned to hunt alone at a distance before he entered God's sanctuary. But he overlooked something. He couldn't afford any good bow and arrows, and without those, he couldn't even pierce the skin of any creature. Now he had earned some money and it would be possible for him to purchase an alloy bow and arrows. And he wanted to start hunting with archery. It was, after all, both a safe and powerful way of hunting. The most important thing was that, in God's sanctuary, only the one who launched the last hit had the chance to gain the beast's soul. And archery must be among the top three methods when it came to the potential windfall. Archery required special training, so most people preferred swords and knives. There weren't many posts about selling a bow and arrows. Hansen was trying to save money, so he wanted to buy some secondhand goods. The alpha alloy bows all cost more than a million, which was too expensive for him. The silver lining was that due to the unpopularity of archery, there were not many competing buyers either. Hansen noticed a post from seven days ago written by someone who was about to go to the second god sanctuary and planned to sell all his belongings. All the stuff was sold except for an alloy bow and six alloy arrows. A bow from the Black Vader series and arrows from the Saber series. Hansen had practiced archery for a while and carefully studied all types of bows and arrows. To make weapons, the alloy didn't necessarily need to be the stiffest, because if it was too stiff, the edge could chip. However, stiff alloy didn't wear out easily. 
Bows and arrows were no exceptions. There were three types alloy used in a black Vader bow. Two were mixed to make the bow itself in order to guarantee its flexibility and stiffness at the same time. And the alloy used in making the string was even more special, its manufacturing methods monopolized by a few interstellar metal production companies. The Black Vader series was a classic series of alloy bows, and the prices were overwhelming. The cheapest one, Wanderer's Bow, cost $2 million, with no arrows or quiver included in the price. Chapter 34. A Bow in Hand the bow for sale in the post was Doomsday in the Black Vader series, which cost $6,680,000 in the store. Its farthest range could reach 2,400 feet. Using this bow, saber arrows could pierce steel armor and the skin of most primitive creatures from more than 900 feet away. However, one would need to have a 7.0 strength rating to draw the string of Doomsday. Normally, only those who had maxed out on mutant geno points could reach a 7.0 strength rating, and this requirement was only to draw the string, unless you could kill with only one shot every time, so that you didn't need a second draw, you would need a rating of more than 8.0 to use the bow. Generally, if one had maxed out on original, primitive, and mutant geno points, one strength rating would reach 10.0 but many would choose to complete evolution and go to Second God's Sanctuary before their rating reached 8.0. No wonder no one would buy this bow. Those with the ability to use the bow wouldn't care about such a small amount of money and try to save with a second-hand weapon. Those who couldn't use it wouldn't bother to buy it either. Hansen sent the poster a message and offered $1 million for the bow and arrows, which altogether would probably cost more than $7 million at a store. He had only kept two out of the six million he earned from selling the golden axe and gave the rest to his mother. Having spent a million learning Ghost Haunt, he wasn't sure if he could purchase the bow and arrows with just one million. The poster didn't reply. He was either offline or didn't want to dignify his offer with a response. Hansen waited for more than half an hour and almost lost hope. He checked other posts and found nothing. Well, some cheap stuff we'll have to do for now. Maybe I can get an arrow beast soul in a few days. Hansen comforted himself and went into the shower. When he was back in front of the screen, he found the poster had sent a message to him, which only contained a web page of a well-known trading site, where the price was marked as $1 million. Hansen almost jumped with joy and paid for the items after confirmation. Soon the item was shipped and would reach Planet Roca the next day. God's Sanctuary could be used as a transfer station for transporting goods produced in the Alliance, so many transactions between different planets were completed this way, and it was also much faster than interstellar spaceship. The next morning, Hansen got a package from a robot postman. After signing for it, he couldn't wait to open it. The black and purple metal bow had a bow string like a silver line. Holding the bow in his hands, Hansen immediately felt powerful. The bow was also carefully kept and looked almost like new except for a small scratch. Six brand new saber alloy arrows were gleaming with a cold shine. To Hansen's surprise, they even came with a matching quiver. It was used, but there was no damage. A bow in my hand, the world is mine. I won't have to risk approaching it the next time I steal a sacred blood creature from Son of Heaven. Hansen stroked the bow and laughed. With no shooting range nearby, Hansen could only try to draw the string a few times. It was indeed quite heavy. Even with the strength, he could only draw a dozen times before his arms started to ache. Not bad. Hansen was pleasantly surprised. He hadn't tested his strength recently, but his rating must be more than 8.0 now, or else he couldn't have used this bow so well. Hansen went to a weapon shop nearby and bought 20 Thunder Arrows and 20 Skyfall Arrows. The quiver that could hold 50 arrows still looked a little empty, even with the arrows in it. Although these arrows had impressive names, they were in fact cheap. Each thunder arrow only cost a thousand, and only the arrowhead was made of alloy. It was too stiff, and would chip easily on bones or shells. Skyfall arrows were even cheaper, a hundred each. They looked like saber arrows but didn't function that well. Hansen only bought Skyfall arrows to practice with, as thunder arrows were too easy to break and the six saber arrows were too expensive to be used for practicing. Hansen played with his new bow, Doomsday, for quite a while and fell in love with it. When it was almost time for him to meet his young clients, Hansen took his bow and arrows and entered God's sanctuary. When he arrived where they were supposed to meet, he saw dozens of people surrounding several young men in biological armor and realized that he wasn't the only candidate. 
Walking around to earn 10,000 easy dollars per day seemed to be a great deal for many. After all, a primitive creature was only worth several hundred, and it also took energy to hunt and move the dead creature around. Hansen frowned at the crowd and was ready to turn away. He just wanted to find an easy job to earn some money. With such competition, he'd rather look for another job. When he was ready to leave, Han Hao and a few people came together. It looked like they were also coming for the young men. Well, well, asked Freak himself here, looking sharp with the bow and arrows. Did you come to protect the masters as well? A young man next to Han Hao ridiculed him with a tone of exaggeration. His remark got the attention of the crowd, as S. Freak was well known in steel armor shelter. People suddenly started to heckle Han Sr. S. Freak, who do you think you are? S. Freak, can you even beat the original creatures? It's more likely that the young masters will need to protect him. Chapter 35 Who Should Go? S. Freak was so infamous that a torrent of scornful abuse was lavished on him. The young men who were paying came to them, and one of them with harsh, Angular features curiously looked at Hansen and said, You are the legendary ass freak? Yes, Hansen answered casually. He did not think it was a bad thing, because in the entire steel armor shelter, he was the only one who had ever stabbed Chin Shin in the butt. This was a kind of achievement in a sense. The young man was obviously curious about Hans Senator. Suddenly he said, You are also here for the job? Hansen nodded. If you don't like the idea, I can go right now. No. If you do not have any questions, we can sign the contract right here," the young man quickly said. A roar went up in the crowd as they heard the young man's decision. Even the young man's friends looked surprised. They pulled the young man to the side and said, Yuan, that's us freak. What are you going to do with him? That's right, Yuan. If we are in danger, he will probably run even faster than us. It's just a waste of money. I've hired him, and you can choose the rest. The young man named Yuan insisted and signed the contract with Han Sr. The others didn't say much after that and selected several more candidates who looked experienced. Han Hao showed them his mutant beast soul weapon and was chosen. The two coming with Han Hao showed some skill and got the job as well. As Freak, you got lucky thanks to your young master's kindness and curiosity, Lu Feng, one of the two, said when walking past Han Sr. My luck has always been good, Hansen said faintly. The clients had selected 10 experienced men to protect them in hunting primitive creatures. With such a team, they could even hunt primitive creatures by herd. Those who had been hired were in a good mood and tried to flatter the clients all the time. They clearly understood the background of these young men who were paying them. The clients actually had very good fighting skills, and they must have graduated from posh schools. Although they had just entered God's sanctuary, their fitness and skills were much better than Han Sin's when he had just arrived. They were only lacking the experience of hunting. When the clients were hunting primitive creatures, Hansen was just practicing archery on the side. Initially he had chosen to practice archery because it was less demanding than other weapons. He was unlikely to be able to learn advanced techniques of sword or knife fighting in the public education system, while all he needed for archery was accuracy. Hansen was still getting to know the performance and characteristics of Doomsday, so he had selected some of the trees nearby as his targets to practice on. As Freak, you are just taking up space. Why are you shooting in vain and ignoring our clients? Lu Feng was confused by Han Sin's behavior and looked at his shots contemptuously. You can't even shoot something within 60 feet. Han Sin did not look at Lu Feng or reply to him. He was just trying the arrow and did not focus on one target, and that was why his shots looked messy. Just let him be. It was just a charity act. Our clients didn't expect him to help at all. Other hired hands laughed. That is true. Just be grateful, ass freak. Lu Feng spit and joined the rest. Do not say you know me. Han Hao found a chance to whisper to Han Sen and went back to laugh with his friends. The clients were making incredible progress. In the beginning, they needed some assistance, while they soon became better and could hunt some rather vicious primitive creatures one on one. Indeed, posh schools had great teaching outcomes. Those who were in integrated compulsory education wouldn't dare to hunt primitive creatures alone with no previous experience. It went so well that everyone lost their vigilance. When the clients were hunting three primitive spotted beasts, one of the beasts played dead and attacked a young client when he approached it. Han Hao and others didn't expect this, and the spotted beast was too close to the client for them to rescue him. In an instant, the claws of the spotted beast were on the delicate neck of the young man. 
The young client was horrified, regretting that he wasn't wearing his alloy helmet. But it was too late for that. Everyone watching screamed in horror. Whoosh! An arrow flew by the client's face and hit the spotted beast in the left eye. The beast whimpered and fell to the ground. Han Hao and the rest swarmed to the spotted beast and cut its corpse into pieces. S Freak, why did you shoot the arrow? You almost hurt Qing. Lu Feng turned around and scolded Han Sr. Other people all followed him, criticizing Han Senator they were secretly ashamed, but instead of self-reflection, they chose to blame Han Senator in their view. Hansen just shot the beast by pure luck, because his freak could never be so good at anything. Get lost. Yuan suddenly shouted with a dark face. Did you hear that S freak? Yuan just asked you to go, cried Lu Feng. I'm letting you go. Yuan stared at Lu Feng coldly. I paid you to protect us, and what did you do when Qing was in danger? Nothing. And you even tried to blame the only person who did his job. All of you, get lost, and I don't want to see you again. Chapter 36, Archery Master Yuan, you can let us go, but according to our contract, this is a breach. You will have to pay us the rest of the money, sneered Lu Feng. Just go. Yuan threw a few stacks of money at them and didn't look at them again. Lu Feng and the rest picked up the money. Although they were angry, they didn't dare to harm the clients because they knew who these young clients were. They gazed at Han Sen and said, Misters, we are far from the shelter, so please be careful, as you are trusting someone unreliable. He is a hundred times more reliable than you, Yuan replied. The hired ones didn't dare to express their anger in front of Yuan, so they just left. Ass, your arrow is so powerful. Commended Qing after the rest were chased away. He didn't want to call Han Sen ass freak, but awkwardly discovered that he didn't know his name. His rating must have reached 7.0 to use Doomsday. Of course it was powerful, said Yuan. 7.0? But they said that he. Qing and the other clients looked at Han Sen and his bow, unconvinced. After all, the story of S Freak was so well known that even they knew about it. I mean at least 7.0. He shot so many arrows in practice, and if his strength hadn't reached. 8.0, it would certainly not be so easy for him, Yuan said, looking at Han Sr. 8.0. They were even more surprised and kept looking at Han Sen as if they hadn't seen him before. Anyone with an 8.0 rating would be rather advanced in First God Sanctuary, so they couldn't believe S Freak would be so strong. Let me try your bow? One client still didn't believe Yuan's words. Han Sen smiled and handed Doomsday to him. The young client held it with both hands and tried to pull the string, but the string didn't even move. He tried a few times more and still failed to draw the string. Although they graduated from top schools and had practiced hypergeno arts as kids, their bodies hadn't been modified by geno points, so their strength could reach 3.5 at best, which was far below the requirement to use Doomsday. You were so weak. Let me. Another client could not stand to watch and grab the bell. He too had failed after a few tries. Everyone gave it a shot except for Yuan, and none could draw the string. Only then had they felt impressed by Han Sr. Archery was practiced by very few people and required a lot of effort. So most people didn't know much about bows and arrows, let alone how good Doomsday was. For example, Han Hao and his friends had no idea that Han Sin's bow was worth millions, or they wouldn't have ridiculed him like that. The clients stopped underestimating Han Sen, not least because Han Sen also had saved Qing's life. They asked his name and called him Sin from then on. After all, God's Sanctuary was a world where only the strong were respected, and Han Sin's archery and strength were truly impressive. Sin, would you show us real archery skills? Qing proposed. All the other clients looked at Han Sin with great anticipation. My archery skills are just ordinary, Hansen laughed. Don't be modest. When one is being too modest, one is actually proud, Qing said. Okay, I will try to shoot then. Han Sin also itched to exercise his skills. Since he received Doomsday, he hadn't tested its limits yet. The clients were overjoyed. Hansen looked around and walked to a hillside. He aimed at something and slowly drew a saber arrow. As he drew the string, blue and swollen veins popped on his arms. The arrow left the string in the blink of an eye and disappeared in the woods. Did he miss? Ching and others didn't hear any prey being hit and thought he had missed. It is too far away. The woods must be at least 400 yards from here. It is understandable to miss, said Qing. Come on, let's go and find out, 
Anson said and walked down the hill into the woods. The clients followed with suspicion. A hundred meters into the woods, they saw a spotted beast nailed on a tree with an arrow through its head. No wonder we did not hear a thing. The arrow directly destroyed the nerves of the spotted beast, and it didn't even have time to shriek. Everyone was so impressed. It was at least 400 yards from where Hansen had been standing, and the beast was killed with just one shot. Hansen's archery must be among the best in First God Sanctuary. After that, all the clients worshipped Hansen and did everything he said. Hansen protected them for half a month and received 150000 in cash. The clients wanted to sign a long-term contract with Hansen, but he declined. He was only short of money at the moment. In the long run, he still needed to focus on his own evolution. Hansen returned to Steel Armor Shelter alone and was stopped by those who had been chased away by Yuan at the gate. These men were led by Lu Feng, and Han Hao was also among them. Ask Freak, you have really pissed me off. How can you make it up to me? Asked Lu Feng, cracking his knuckles while slowly approaching Han Sr. Chapter 37 Who's Broadsword? A crowd of spectators started to gather. They were used to seeing Hans and getting bullied. How do you want me to compensate you? Said Hansen calmly, watching Lu Feng approaching him. Let me kick your ass, Lu Feng said, throwing a punch at Hansen's face. Lu Feng's punch was fierce and fast. If Hansen was hit, his nose would be smashed. When everyone was thinking that he would suffer, Hansen leaned his body and dodged the punch. Meanwhile, he tripped Lu Feng with his leg and made him fall on his face. Lu Feng fell so hard that his nose was bleeding and his eyes were watering. Burning with anger, he drew his Alpha Alloy broadsword from the sheath and slashed it toward Han Sr. Little Scum. How dare you resist? I'll kill you. Han Hao had mixed feelings watching this. Although he despised Han Sun, Han Sun was still his cousin, and Han Hao felt terrible watching him being bullied and perhaps getting killed. But if he helped Han Sun, and people knew him to be the cousin of Ass Freak, how could he stay at Steel Armor Shelter? Having hesitated for a while, Han Hao turned his face to the side deliberately avoid seeing Han Senator Han Hao thought that he would immediately hear Han Sen's screams, but the screams he heard were not from Han Sen, but from Lu Feng. Han Hao quickly turned to see what had happened and couldn't believe his own eyes. Lu Feng's alpha alloy broadsword was now in Han Sen's hand, and Lu Feng himself was pinned to the ground with his arm twisted behind himself, screaming while too scared to struggle. Han Hao did not see how it happened, but others all saw clearly. They were so surprised that they stood there with their mouths wide open. When Lu Feng slashed his broadsword at Hansen, everyone thought as Freak was doomed. But as soon as Lu Feng wielded the Alpha Alloy broadsword, Hansen grabbed his hand and twisted, bringing Lu Feng to his knees. Hansen then knocked his back with a knee and held him down to the floor. No one could believe that as Freak would have such fine movements and were all in a daze. There was no sound except for Lu Feng's screams. What are you doing? Kill this bastard. Ouch. Lu Feng shouted to the onlookers while screaming. Crack. His arm was broken by Hansen before he could even finish the sentence. Covered in cold sweat, Lu Feng was deathly pale. Lu Feng's friends saw this and rushed to Hansen, raising their weapons. Hansen was still holding Lu Feng's alpha alloy broadsword in his hand and used it to block the first alloy weapon swung at him. To his surprise, the weapon was cut in half by Lu Feng's broadsword instantaneously. This dumbass had a really nice alpha alloy broadsword. It's at least worth one or two million, Hansen thought and decided not to give it back. In a short while, all the other weapons were cut off by Hansen, and their owners were scared off. No one dared to attack Hansen anymore. Han Hao was stunned, almost thinking he was in a dream. Lu Feng had a strength rating of 6.7 and a nice weapon so he enjoyed quite a lot of attention in Steel Armor Shelter. Although Han Hao had a mutant beast soul weapon, he knew he could not match Lu Feng. All of a sudden, Lu Feng became the one lying on the floor without his weapon, while Han Sen became the winner. The change was so drastic that Han Hao couldn't process it. Hadn't he been isolated by both Qin Xian and Son of Heaven since he entered the shelter? Didn't he fail to hunt even a primitive creature? Didn't he? Han Hao looked at Hansen blankly, with a variety of complex emotions entangled in his mind. Hansen did not continue the fight with the rest, but went back to take Lu Feng's sheath away, hung the sheath on his own belt, and returned his new broadsword to his new sheath. The next time you want compensation, 
just come to me, said Hansen as he strode toward the gate of Steel Armor Shelter. The onlookers all looked at him as if it was the first time they saw him. Stop. Someone approached riding a beast soul mount when Hansen was about to enter the gate. It was Luo Tianya, son of Heaven's henchman. Luo, as Freak broke my arm and seized my broadsword. You have to avenge me, shouted Lu Feng in delight at the sight of Luo Tianyang. De Shibak. Luo Tianyang first glanced at Lu Feng and then at Han Sr. I was wondering who was so daring to hurt my guy. So, it was you scum. Luo Tianyang took out his alloy whip and whacked it at Han Sr. Hansen paused and wielded his broadsword at the whip. When the two weapons collided, Hansen and Luo Tianyang both shuddered. Luo Tianyang suddenly shouted, how come you have such strength? Luo Tianyang's own strength rating had reached 9.6. Although at this week he did not use all his strength, Hansen must have had at least an 8.0 rating to be able to block his whip, which he could not believe. Chapter 38 My Guy This person must die. Luo Tianyang suddenly had an urge to kill Hansen and was about to raise his whip again. When he looked at Hansen, however, he stopped and his whole body became tense. Hansen had put away the broadsword and held Doomsday in his hands. Drawing the string to the fullest, he pointed the arrowhead at Luo Tianyang. Although Luo Tianyang did not recognize Doomsday, thanks to his rich experience of fighting, he could smell danger from Hansen and his bow and stayed completely still. The two were into a deadlock, Luo Tianyang did not dare to move, and Hansen did not have the confidence to kill Luo Tianyang with only one shot. Even time seemed to stand still. The onlookers were completely shocked. When Hansen beat Lu Feng and his friends, they simply couldn't believe it, and now he was even well matched with Luo Tianong. Luo Tianong was one of Son of Heaven's henchmen, his strength rating was near 10.0, and even he didn't dare to move with Hansen's arrow pointed at him. Anyone with a strength rating of more than 9.0 would be among the top 100 in Steel Armor Shelter, where there were more than 100,000 people. That someone like this could be scared by Hansen was an overwhelming fact to all. No one knew how Hansen could gain such strength when isolated by both Qin Xian and Son of Heaven. Hansen, put down your bow, said Qin Xian, leading her gang, who were all riding beast soul mounts. Hansen put away his bow and arrow. His strength was still weaker than Luo Tianong, and Hansen was not sure if he could shoot his opponent when Luo had his guard up. Keeping the posture was consuming his energy very fast, and the deadlock was not good for Han Sr. Miss Chain, I'll kill this bastard for you, said Luo Tianong, whipping at Hansen, who had already disarmed himself. Hansen seemed to be prepared for this and was about to block the whip with Doomsday. Before he acted, a beast's soul bronze sword was thrown over and hit the whip. The strength of the throw was so fierce that the whip fell from Luo Tianyang's hand. I will discipline my guy, and you can mind your own business. Qin Xian looked at Luo Tianyang coldly and summoned back her sword before she rode into the shelter. Follow me, Qin Xian turned back and commanded Han Sr. Hansen quickly caught up with her and followed her gang into the shelter. The entire steel armor shelter was suddenly in an uproar. As Freak beat Lu Feng and his friends, was well matched against Luo Tianyang and was, most importantly, declared by Qin Xian to be her guy. All the news had driven everyone mad. No one understood what had happened, it was all guesswork. Did they develop a love affair from the stab? I have to learn from ass freak and stab a beautiful and capable woman in the ass. Maybe I can become rich and powerful. Qin Xian looks so serious, but she is actually a flirt. Rumors spread across the entire steel armor shelter, and Hansen was once again put under the spotlight. However, Hansen's strength was not really the focus. People cared more about whether he was Qin Xian's boy toy. Even Qin Xian's gang would look at Hansen weirdly. You know archery? Asked Qin Xian after she called Hansen to a hall. I used to practice, Hansen shrugged. You can use Doomsday, so you must have worked hard on it, said Qin Xian matter-of-factly. You can join Bullseye and follow me in the future. No, Hansen refused. Qin Xian bite her lips and said snappily, you just offended Luo Tianang. Without my protection, do you suppose he'd let you live? Thank you for your kindness. But I will deal with it myself, Hansen said indifferently. You should have known who I am. My men are more or less related to the military, and Bullseye belongs to me. Follow me, and you will gain great advantages when applying for military schools. Qin Xian suppressed her anger and said to Han Sr. 
I never wanted to go to a military school. Hansen knew that he could apply to a military school for further education after he finished integrated compulsory education. However, all military schools had high requirements of fitness. If one's fitness index was below 10 before the first evolution, one had no chance at military schools. For Hansen, to reach 10 in the fitness index was not hard, but he wasn't interested in going to school at all. He'd rather put more effort into hunting. Exasperated, Qin Shin said, without education from military school and an aristocratic title, you could only be an ordinary soldier when you are of age to serve. Only through a military school can you become something in the army. At least by then you wouldn't have been sacrificed. Chapter 39, St. Paul. Let's talk about this another time. I have to go now, and thank you so much for all your help. I'll buy you dinner sometime, said Hansen, ready to go back. He knew that what Qin Xian said made sense, but he had his own plan. He wanted to get an aristocratic title before he turned 20 and went to serve, because aristocrats had certain privileges in the army and would not be sent to the front. Stop. Have I excused you? Qin Xian stared at Hansen fiercely. Station master, please, that's not my thing, said Hansen bitterly. It's fine if you don't want to go. Qin Xian suddenly smiled at Hansen and said, if you do not go, each time you enter the teleport station, I will fight you. Looking at her evil smile, Han Sen's heart sank. He knew that Qin Xian hadn't tried her best at all when fighting with him in the past because he was no match for her at the moment. Judging from her expression, he knew if he declined, he would really have a hard time in the future. I'll just join Bullseye then, Han Sen said, depressed. Qin Xian snapped at Han Sen. Do you have any idea how many people in Steel Armor Shelter want to join my gang? And you just acted like I've asked you to take poison. Freedom is priceless, and to lose my freedom is exactly like taking poison, Hansen sighed. Then you could die a slow death. Even if you died and became a ghost, you'd still be my ghost, Qin Xian pouted and said. Hansen knew that Qin Xian had made up her mind, and he accepted the offer unwillingly. Feeling dejected, he left the hall. Qin Xian watched him go, and was very pleased by his upset look for some strange reason. She couldn't help but smile. Station Master, why do you have to recruit such a person to our Steel Armor Gang? He's not worthy of being a member of Bullseye. A woman of the same age as Qin Xian came out from a side door and asked after Hansen had left. Monli, trust me, although this guy can be a bastard sometimes, he does have great potential in some aspects, Qin Xian told young Monli seriously. Qin Xian had witnessed what a fast learner and diligent student Hansen was. Repeatedly defeated by her, he didn't go down but grew stronger and stronger. Now even she had to take him seriously. Such progress and mentality were truly amazing. Qin Xian's opinions of Hansen had improved a great deal, or else she wouldn't have defended him in front of everyone. Hansen returned to his room and teleported back home before Qin Xian had the chance to leave God's sanctuary. He was not the least interested in going to a military school. Before, it would have been a great option for him because he could learn hypergeno arts there. Now, with Jade Skin, he didn't have to waste his time in a military school at all. It would be much wiser for him to spend time hunting and increasing his geno points. As for Bullseye, Hansen had even less interest in joining. Although as a member of Bullseye, he could gain assistance from Qin Xian's information network to improve his chance of finding mutant and sacred blood creatures, he would also have to share the meat hunted with the rest of her team. Hansen decided to go hunting alone after some preparation. If Qin Xin didn't see him for a while, she would probably forget about the whole thing. Hansen had wanted to buy an alpha alloy dagger with the 150,000 he had earned, but now he had the broadsword he seized from Lu Feng, so the other was no longer necessary. The broadsword was made of a special alloy with Z metal, which made it very stiff. Its edge could easily cut primitive creatures open. So weapons made from this kind of alloy had always been expensive. Nice. Hansen touched the edge and his finger was cut immediately. Looking at the shiny edge, Hansen loved the weapon so much he couldn't put it down. It's worth the price, he thought to himself. The Han family had an alloy business before, and although it was a small factory, they had unique formulas. Their products might not be as good as this broadsword, but could also cut open the skin of some primitive creatures so the business was quite profitable. If it was not for those terrible family members, their company could surely be among the top three on planet Roka. But now the company had been bought by Starry Group. 
Hansen was too young back then, and to this day, he still didn't quite understand why Starry Group had to acquire their company. He knew his father's death must have had something to do with Starry Group, but he had no ability to find out the truth, so he had to lay low. Son, today I have something important at work. Can you take you into school? Luo Sulan knocked on the door and asked Han Sr. School has started already? I did not know that. No worries, Mom. I'll take her, Hansen quickly said. School started a few days ago, and you were in God's sanctuary, so I didn't want to bother you, said Luo Sulan. Which school is it? asked Han Sr. It is St. Paul, and I used to the money you left to pay the tuition. Luo Sulan felt slightly uneasy, as she had spent almost all the money on Yan school. Great. St. Paul is the best on planet Roka except for the posh schools. Hansen was very happy. He didn't have an aristocratic title for the moment and couldn't send Yin to a posh school, but a good private school is still much better than integrated compulsory education. After chatting with his mother, Hansen took Han Yin on a maglev train to school. The entrance of St. Paul was almost blocked by private aircrafts, and some of them were deluxe. Almost all rich people without an aristocratic title would send their children to St. Paul. And almost all students here were from affluent families. Walking his sister to school, Hansen saw a middle-aged fat guy getting off an aircraft with a flirtatious woman on his side and an eight-year-old boy in his arms. He paused, as the middle-aged fat guy happened to be his uncle, Han Lei. Chapter 40. Physical Test Center. What are you doing here? Han Lei was surprised to see Hansen here. Taking Yin to school, replied Han Sr. Yin is coming to St. Paul? Han Lei looked at Han Sen and Han Yin, unconvinced. Since a few days ago, Han Sen said, ready to walk Han Yin into the school gate. Han Lei thought for a while and ran in front of Han Senator. He grabbed Han Sen's wrist and raged, I knew it. My elder brother managed the company for so many years, he must have embezzled lots of money. You were just lying to me about not being able to come up with two million while you are now spending millions to send Yin to St. Paul. I'm telling you, this money belonged to the whole family, just like the house. We must split it, or I'll... Or what? What can you do about it? Hansen looked at Han Lei coldly. He was completely disappointed in his relatives and wouldn't give them a cent more. Boy, watch it. I'm your uncle. Han Lei flinched with Hansen watching him, but he didn't plan to let Hansen walk free. Uncle? Hansen smiled dismissively. Well... Please go home and review the legal documents we signed and see if you have the right to anything we own. From now on, do not think you can take a penny from us ever again. The reason why Hansen gave them two million so promptly was to draw a line between his relatives and his real family. To get the two million, his relatives all signed a document prepared by Mr. Zhang which made it impossible for them to take anything from Hansen's family in the future. That is fraud. I'll go find your mom right away. How dare you hide money from us? Cried Han Lei angrily. Uncle, don't even think about it. I have the right to kill a trespasser. Hansen looked at Han Lei gloomily. Little brat, how dare? Han Lei threw a punch at Hansen furiously. With a blank expression, Hansen grabbed Han Lei's arm and threw Han Lei over his own shoulder. Han Lei shouted out in pain. Uncle, if you want to die, welcome to our house. Hansen stared at Han Lei coldly. Han Lei opened his eyes wide, as if he didn't know Han Senator the look on Han Sen's face had terrified him. Han Lei was an evolver, although just by maxing out on primitive geno points. He didn't really do much in Second God's Sanctuary, but he was still an evolver. It was abnormal that Han Sen, who hadn't evolved at all, could give him a shoulder throw easily. His nephew suddenly looked like a different person. Han Sen suddenly smiled and pulled Han Lei up. I'm sure my aunt doesn't know about this woman and child. I think I should talk to her, Hansen whispered, while Han Lei was still shocked by a sudden change. You think my wife will believe you? Han Lei said madly. That doesn't matter, as long as she believes this. Hansen showed Han Lei the comlink on his wrist. He turned the video camera on the moment he saw Han Lei. You. Shocked, Han Lei reached to grab the comlink. Hansen only moved slightly to make Han Lei fall again. Uncle, we can negotiate a price, and I can sell you this. Hansen smiled and was about to pull him up again. Han Lei grinned and suddenly reached to twist Han Sen's hand, ready to break it and seize his comlink. Hansen flipped his hand and held Han Lei's hand down, making him kneel on the floor and howl like a pig. Uncle, it seems that you have no intention to negotiate. 
I'll have to show it to my aunt then. Hansen released Han Lei's hand and turned to leave. Wait. Han Lei quickly stopped Han Sen and gritted his teeth. 10,000. I'll give you 10,000 and you delete it. Hansen turned away. 200,000 or I'll go to my aunt. Okay, okay, said Han Lei, limping over to take hold of Han Sr. Thanks then. Cash or bank transfer? Hansen asked with a faint smile. Han Lei unwillingly transferred 200,000 to Han Sen. Well, now can you delete it? Of course I will delete it, but only when I'm in a good mood, Hansen said and walked away. Brat, you lied to me. Han Lei became furious and raised his fist. However, he froze at the sight of Hansen, as his nephew's movements had really left a strong impression. Uncle, I received your money so I will certainly delete it, but I did not say when I will do it. So you'd better keep me in a good mood. Hansen patted Han Lei on the shoulder and stopped smiling. He whispered, also, do not let me see you in my home again, otherwise I will kill you. Han Lei shuddered, and for some reason, he knew Hansen meant it. S asterisk hashtag T. The brat has become so evil, Han Lei cursed as Hansen moved away. Ashamed that he was terrified by a boy, Han Lei was still nervous deep down and changed his mind about going to Hansen's home. After sending Yin to school, Hansen was in a great mood. On his way back, he saw a physical test center and went in, wanting to know his current physical fitness level. 